Hey there, Ted here. Arrow. <laughs> Arrow is here too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So yeah, the 7.0 AT treadmill from Horizon. Uh, Ted here, big for runner and family. Heather. <laughs> And the nice new treadmill. And the nice new treadmill. So we've had it about seven weeks now, and we uh, have put it through its paces, and we're just going to kind of tell you what we've been finding, good things, bad things. Um, not that there's really been that many bad things, but a few things that are a little quirks, and uh, yeah, just kind of let you know how it's been going now that we've had it for seven weeks and we've been using it. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so happy. much better. <laughs> <laughs> the, the previous treadmill we had... I'm not going to mention the brand or whatever, but it was supposed was to... was a soul-sucking piece of garbage that just did more damage than it did good. Yeah. Quite literally, I believe I got worse on the treadmill. I got worse running every time um, I got on it. When we got it, I was at my peak running condition. I came off a year where I'd done 1,971 miles, and I couldn't, it, I couldn't run on the thing. It just was awful. And it was. And it's been many years. And uh, as we got into a health journey to try and get healthier, lose weight, get in better shape, that kind of stuff, that treadmill was holding us back. So we got this. Uh, we've used this brand, or we haven't used this brand before, but the, but the parent company of this brand, we've used some of the treadmills that they've had before. Uh, they were more of a disposable price uh, level. They, like the, they were the Livestrong for a while, weren't they? Livestrong. The same? So, yeah. yeah, Livestrong. Johnson Fitness was the um, is the parent company. And yeah, there were Livestrongs uh, were the ones that we would use. Uh, and then this is Horizon, which is owned by the basically the same parent company. And there's a lot of similarities uh, compared to the Livestrongs, but it's a, bit more, a little bit more robust. Hopefully it can handle us. And so far it's been really good. Mm -hmm. So... And it's funny because when we got that last treadmill, mm -hmm. um, we were running two treadmills a good chunk of the time mm. because we were busting treadmills. So instead of needing to wait for parts and whatever else, mm -hmm. we always had that second treadmill. Yeah. So, I mean, mm -hmm. always in the back of my head was like, come on, the, I used the smaller treadmill and you used the bigger one. Mm -hmm. And there was always kind of that, oh, how bad can it be? Yeah. But then when mine ultimately died, mm -hmm. yeah, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always blamed myself that why can't I get used to running on this? But I should have realized early on that I was in phenomenal shape. 220 pounds, came off running a dopey challenge in, in uh, January 2015. Done, did super well. I was in great running shape. And I blame myself that I couldn't run on the treadmill without realizing then. Should have realized mm -hmm. then that the treadmill was the problem. And at the same time, like while you were doing that mm -hmm. dopey, yeah. I was doing the same dopey at home on my machine yeah. that ultimately broke it because mm -hmm. it just wasn't capable of doing the five, the 10, the half, and then mm -hmm. the full. It got me through the five, the 10, the half, and then the half the second day. And then the smoke was just too much. And ultimately, it died. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we figured we would go up, and we never should have gone up. So we've moved on. Yes, exactly. We're very happy. Yes. <laughs> so let's uh, actually talk about the treadmill itself, I guess. Uh, some of the things we found. So we've got it turned on here. Uh, so yeah, the 7.0 AT has the thinner of the two decks. The 7.4 and the 7.8 have a deck that's about two inches wider. Um, so that would be kind of nice to have, but I'm I'm 6'2", uh, and yeah, a uh, little bit bigger, but I find that even this deck, um, its width is good for me. The, the deck is holding up really well. Uh, if you move up to the 7.4 or 7.8, you also get a thicker um, deck underneath the belt, and the belt itself is a little bit thicker. So um, we just didn't at the time, well, they were sold out of the 7.4 and the price difference and we got a good deal on this. So we went with this. Uh, if I'd gotten the same deal on the 7.4 and been in stock, probably would have gone up to the thicker deck and that kind of stuff just from my size and stuff. But again, we're not seeing any issues uh, with 
my weight on this and it is rated at 325 pounds so not a problem i've had this up to eight miles an hour at, at about 240 pounds so it and it the treadmill had no issues so it's robust enough for that it's uh it's good in the about seven weeks we've had it it's been used every single day heather's used it more than i have uh just heather's in the middle of a uh, big run streak so got lots of miles in there so we're at about the 450 mile mark i just a little bit over 450 miles between the two of us on the treadmill uh at 150 miles you need to 150 miles or five months uh <laughs> and we've had it seven weeks we've lived it twice and we're probably do it hasn't come up with it got, it's got a warning that comes up around 150 miles to tell you to lube it. We haven't done that yet. Uh, or we haven't got that from the, the third time yet. We've done it twice so far. So That'll probably close. pop up on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It should be pretty pretty soon. So, um, but yeah, so that's that's good. Um, one bit of advice, I guess, when we're talking about lubing now, um, is that the, the recommended way to lube this is to... Um, at the back of the treadmill, there are two screws that let you pull back one of the roller bars, or I guess let it go inwards, and it loosens the belt, and you lift the belt up and you lubricate underneath it, and you follow the whole process. And then you re-tighten uh, re the belt. Uh, basically, if you, turned, if you turn the screw a certain number of times, that's the number of ways you screw it back. But I find that we're probably spending two, three days after we've lubed it trying to get the belt realigned properly. So um, what I would recommend is if you Amazon or wherever, get a silicon um, uh, device to either uh, help you lubricate without loosening the deck, or they have some silicon bottles that have a applicator tube that's long enough to reach beyond the halfway part of the, uh, of the deck. And you can basically lube it without loosening the belt. So it's just a little bit, uh, a little bit easier and then you're not fighting with that kind of stuff and it makes the maintenance real fast if you're doing the loosening and the retightening i think if you have experience doing it you could probably do it in about 15 minutes with the with the uh we have the bottle with the applicator uh nozzle less than five so that's <laughs> nice and easy nice and quick on the control side okay we look at the uh, treadmill itself here so at the top, you've got one screen. We've got another screen down below. Uh, this top screen, if you've got a tablet you're using, it's going to block that top screen, um, which I don't mind that it blocks it because you can't adjust what things it displays on this top screen. And some of the stuff that's on here is not stuff I want to see. I don't use pace. I like to use miles per hour. So instead of minutes per mile, I like miles per hour. That's just how my brain works, how I trained myself to run. So um, I, I, I would have liked to be able to change that, but I can't see it if I got a tablet on there anyway. The bottom screen has a few different options and you can see there's a label at the top of each one and a label at the bottom of each one. And depending on which option you set, you can kind of play around. So um, for that very, that pace thing, you have speed or um, speed or incline, that speed will give you your miles per hour, so that's nice. You have your distance, or you can set it to pace down here if you want to see that as well. Calorie, heart rate, it'll default to showing you calorie all the time, uh, unless you hold the two heart rate centers sen uh, sensors at the same time, and let it go for a little bit, and then it'll get your heart rate, and it'll automatically pop up there, and also up there. Um, time and countdown. Depending on how you want to use your settings, we always just have it at time because we don't go, I want to go for a half an hour. We always go until we're done what we're doing. So it's, uh, we don't really use the countdown, <coughs> but you can change that. Buttons for different um, pre-programmed settings and things like that. We don't use those either. One of the reasons we went with this treadmill is because everything is integrated to itself and we can do everything we want to do manually. That was one of the other issues with our previous treadmill is that it was all controlled through an app and it basically had a little built-in Android system within the treadmill itself. And we've had that app crash and get corrupted. And the treadmill was essentially a brick until we could figure out how to fix that application. So it's, we like that this is all 
buttons, manual stuff that we can press and it all just works. Okay, so it just turned itself off. I'm gonna turn it back on. <laughs> Help show. There we go, it's coming back up. Okay, so yeah, select user screen at the start here. But yeah, so um, from the manual controls here, uh, from right here, I could just hit start and go do full manual. There's a, uh, for different menus within the actual um, internal programming of this thing, you can use this as a spinner dialing knob. So if I turn it, you can see it's selecting different users and it has up to user five and a guest. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to do anything like that. So you just kind of set it whichever one you want and you can hit the start button just to go. Stop, of course, is when you're running, it hits pause. Essentially, it pauses your run. Uh, one nice thing about this that I like versus the old one, uh, the old treadmill, is that if you paused a run and you restarted it, it wouldn't go back to what your last speed was. It wouldn't start ramping up your speed. You'd have to manually dial yourself back in. So this will, uh, if you were doing six miles an hour, you hit pause for a second, you get back on, you stand on the sides of the deck, you hit the start button, it ramps back up to six miles an hour, you're good to go. That was a super nice surprise after that yeah. last treadmill and yeah. having it just sort of stop dead and then not, it seemed like it just didn't want to go again. So I was like, oh, come on, yeah. just work with me here. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, it's so many of these features seem to be so much more user friendly. Um, and then here we got up and down buttons for speed, up and down buttons for incline, uh, preset inclines up to 15%. We haven't used it, I don't think. Uh, I played with it a little bit and I didn't get it above 5%. Um, no issues there. Super quick to change. Um, and again, like I was around 240. Uh, 240 pounds when I did it, and it was able to change the incline with me on the deck. No issues, no problems. Uh, speed presets on the side here. Um, that was one of the things is I was kind of missing that there wasn't a five miles an hour in the middle between four and six, but um, that was mostly because the old treadmill, that's how slow I had got. Now with this new treadmill, it doesn't matter. I don't use the fives. I'm, I'm in the six miles an hour range, so I haven't found it to be a problem. There are lots of ways to change your speeds fairly quickly. Those up and down going up 0.1 miles an hour each time. Uh, the incline buttons go up 0.5% each time. And then on the sides, we have a spinner knob that you can see here is also changing, same as that. But when you're actually running, that will change the incline up and down. And one on the right here does the speed. So it aligns with that each there's a little bit of a click each time you move it, and each one of those clicks is like 0.1 uh, mile an hour. Now, with that, it's kind of, I did some testing where if you're running and you just go back and forth like this, it's got kind of a smoothing feature so it doesn't run the speed up and down, up and down as you do that. So if you go like this, nice and slow, it'll register all of those and bring your speed down nicely. But what, does happen is you happen to bump it and it goes up to 0.1 it goes up 0.1 or whatever it it's it's easy to bump yes it's easy to bump them and move your speed up and down when you're not expecting it which is has been sort of interesting because every so often i'll be like clip it along at like 6.1 kind of thing and then i'll look back at my screen i'm like oh i'm 6.3 go me <laughs> and like sneaks it in there for you <laughs> yeah. it will help when you Least expect when you least expect it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so that, that that's interesting. Now, there's um, that can be a little frustrating, but there's we found a way to kind of deal with that. So then that is to do with if you look down on the side, there's a button here and a button here. Now each of those corresponds to a a preset you can set for your run. It's really for interval work. So if you want to say do a minute run at six miles an hour at 1% incline and then a minute walk at 4% incline, what you can do is set your speeds at incline. So you set it, you get your treadmill going the way you want to go and you press and hold the button to set it. And after a couple seconds, the screen will flash and you and know it, it's set. And it beeps. And it beeps too. Okay, yeah. yeah. I always have my headphones on so I don't hear it beep. But <laughs> so yeah, so then it beeps and it's recorded. 
and then you go and you get down to your other, you get to your other interval and you do the same presetting thing. So then when you're doing your actual, say a high intensity workout or a, or an interval, interval workout, you just need to watch your time. And when it's time to switch, you just hit the button, the corresponding button. I use need. them all the time. That's my high speed. That's my low speed back and forth. And that way too, if I accidentally happen to hit a button, it's not going to drop down to zero because I think the the default setting on those is 0.5 for a speed. Mm -hmm. So there have been a couple of times where my head hasn't been really in the game and I haven't used the presets. And like if I'm just going to do a straight out run um, and then I accidentally hit a button and suddenly I'm it's starting to dial down to 0.5. It's just something I'm now in a habit of. I will put uh, if I'm doing a steady run, I will put the same speed on both sides mm -hmm. just so that I, if I happen to hit that button, which doesn't happen too much anymore because I'm kind of used to it. But now I, I know if I happen to ride that button for whatever reason that day, it's not going to do anything to my speed. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that, that's the good piece of advice that if you're, if you're not doing intervals, even if you're not doing intervals and you're doing a steady speed run, just lock them in, just lock them in. Uh, even if you just do one, because then it's a quick turnaround, but it's, yeah, just lock it in. So that's, that's, uh, that's useful. Uh, other buttons on here, there's one that turns on the fan. This is the only fan on it. It's not very strong. Um, and that was one thing the other tre treadmill had, is it had strong fans, and it had multiple fans, um, which I didn't ever use. I always use standalone fan when I'm running or whatever, but uh, you used to use them, but I this is... Do. Yeah, yeah, but this is now needs needs the external fan. Yeah. So, so that's unfortunate. It might be okay for a light walk, but it's it's just not good if uh, it's not sufficient for a, a strong run. But I mean, if it, if it was in an open area where there was some airflow, it might not be as big of an issue. But I mean, mm. clearly we're in a very enclosed space right here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so that's unfortunate. Uh, the Bluetooth, a couple of different things on the Bluetooth. It's uh, you can uh, basically uh, link your phone or uh, we've got an Amazon Fire Stick hooked to this monitor here and we could bring the audio through uh, into the speakers here. There's two speakers, one on each side. There's also underneath here a 3.5 millimeter jack. So if you want to plug in an aux cable from something um, and then you can uh, do music or whatever through them. We don't do that um, because uh, quite often when Heather's running or whatever, I'm working just a little bit over there during a work day. So we don't want that extra noise. And that is one thing we didn't mention. This this treadmill is super quiet. Quite often I'm not even sure Heather's running mm -hmm. when it's when when she's going. So that's good. Uh yeah, so we don't do that. Um but it is possible to connect it. We've even you know connected it with the fire stick and that kind of stuff. So it's it's um it does work. Um but it's yeah, it's just not something we use. The other thing you can do with the Bluetooth is there is an app. Uh, AFG is the something fitness group is another one of the, uh, the companies under the Johnson Fitness umbrella and they make an app that helps you do some stuff here. So you saw when I dialed it that there was one labeled Heather, one labeled Ted for the different users. You're able to do that in the app. There's two different apps. One's AFG Connect, one's AFG Pro, I believe. The Connect does not rescale for a phone. I, it's just not good. The AFG Pro, I've set it up on both my phone and on Heather's, and I'm still not 100% sure what I did to get it to work. Um, if there's interest, put a comment down below, and I'll try and do a video to see if I can uh, basically uh, nuke the app off my phone and try and get it to work again. But there was definitely some weirdness where you know I'm holding it here, and it didn't seem to work. But if I rested it on the tablet thing, I managed to get it to work. But I don't know if I hit a button and that was coincidental, or if the Bluetooth on this is just that week that you need to have it setting in the sitting in the tablet holder. I don't know. Works perfectly fine for speakers and stuff though. The, the, the app, their, their company's app is not great. Now it's also allows you to connect into things like Zwift and um, other fitness apps and things like that. But as I said before, we wanted to be able to do everything manually. So we, we don't, do any of those uh, online fitness classes or challenges or anything like that. We're doing all this stuff just based on our own plans. 
So we haven't used any of those applications, so I can't really say how well it's integrated into Zwift or anything like that. This isn't adjustable bounce or anything, is it? It just is what it is? It just is what it is, yeah. Is this a liftable one? Yes, it okay. is. Yeah, it does uh, lift up the deck, the, the, the lock it in. So okay. just quickly snap it up there. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so. Yeah. And just quickly replace them. It is an, a light light drop. Let's make sure there's no children or pets underneath it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so it's, yeah. Well, it does it. You know, I was going to say, I thought it was labeled, but there it is. Feather light holding right there. Yeah, so it's the 20-inch deck. Super robust. Uh, we've had no real problems with it. There was only once I saw something weird with the screen um, and the calorie counting. Um, based on my side, uh, size and speed or whatever, I'm expecting a certain amount of calories per hour. And that's what it kind of shows. But there was one run where it was showing about 25% calories, 25% less is what my expected calorie burn was. Couldn't figure out what it was or why it did it. The next time I ran, it was reset. So I don't know what it was, some weird little bug, but it's just just strange. Other than that, very responsive on, especially the individual button presses, the quick speed buttons I haven't had any issues with. Super the nice. reason we got this one um, oh, yeah. is because of the pistol grips. Uh, when I run, I, I, I wander <laughs> badly. Uh, so I need to, I need contact with two hands. Um, I don't hold on. I don't support myself, but I always have contact. Just, I don't know why, but I've been known to close my eyes when I run. <laughs> Possibly there, a safety issue. But... There's no explanation <laughs> for this, but it, it's just the way I am. So I need pistol grips. Um, the last machine I was using the side and it wasn't awful, but I'm just more comfortable with my arms up here. Yeah. It's a more and comfortable running I position. And I don't get like all swollen in my hands if they're dense, mm. just not. Yeah. So yeah, I plant them here and yeah. Yeah. So which that is, way they're, yeah. they're quick switches for me mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. It's so much better. It's yeah. Like it's. Like that one, di like the other machine was still not totally broken, mm -hmm. but we just had to, we finally just mm -hmm. decided, no, yeah, it needs to go and we need to get the right machine again. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think the last time I tried to do a longer run on that treadmill, um, I did an 11 miles on it and it was, it was it destroyed me mentally and physically and it was i never wanted to run again yeah. basically and yeah so that day we ordered yeah. new treadmill i mean my streak now i'm in month six i guess for my mm -hmm. treadmill streak mm -hmm. so i started with the other machine and my mental setting for that i was just like hey all i'm going to do is walk i will walk at one pace because that's all I could do on that machine. But it was like, just fine. Mm -hmm. That's what I will do. But since we've got this one, I'm running, I'm doing intervals, I'm doing straight runs. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's there's a variety of... And like because the intervals uh, kind of raises the... I mentioned the responsive controls. That was one of the issues with the other treadmill, is that you would hit a button and you wouldn't know what it would do. Mm -hmm. You didn't know, like, I, I'm in, I want to go up 0.1 mile an hour. You might go up 0.1. It might not do anything. You might go up four miles an hour. You didn't know what it was going to do. Yeah. It was it, it was a, a literal safety issue. So I didn't I didn't want to do any kind of interval interval training on it because if I was on the fast part of the interval and I couldn't get it down to the slow side, I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it's just awful that way. But this is super responsive, built for that. Uh, specifically to do the high intensity training and interval work and it's good to feel safe on a treadmill again mm -hmm. yeah exactly so yeah like lots of people i know i always see it online people calling treadmills dreadmills and that was never my mindset i did a lot of my marathon training on treadmills and i've always thought of it as kind of my secret weapon because 
I could do all that interval training very easily on a treadmill, especially the stuff we've had in the past. But that last one, I couldn't. And it literally became, yeah, like, I'm going to go serve my time on the treadmill. Here, you can almost get excited about yeah. doing a run. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like, so I'm much falling different. asleep thinking, okay, what am I going to use for my intervals? Yeah. I mean, I started out seven weeks ago just starting to mm. maybe run again, mm. trying to do like a 5.5 on the other machine, mm. not having it go very well. But now, I mean, I started back at like 5.8 on this machine, which mm. was an easy enough mm. adjustment to make, get those intervals going. Now my interval speeds, I'm like 6.5 and 6.6 6 yeah. after seven weeks. Yeah, exactly. It's it. We had buried underlying capability that we had built years ago, but that treadmill suppressed it. It just, yes, yeah, so you just couldn't see that you could do it. And I mean, I guess that's one of the things like, uh, an easy walk on that treadmill was 3.2 miles an hour for me. If I walk outside, I'm closer to four miles an hour. It's yeah. There's something about that, that, yeah, this, this isn't supposed to be a bitching session about the other treadmill, but it's just, we are that gushing about this treadmill, especially in comparison yeah. to that one. So it's, this is super good for us. Yeah. I, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it. Yeah. yeah. So this is what, like our fourth one of this? Uh, from this company? Yeah. yeah. We've had, we had an LS10, a Livestrong 10. Uh, that one we destroyed. It, uh, basically broke the deck on it multiple times and things like that. Just because it was, it was more of a disposable level. Then we got a second LS10. And then at some point, like we broke that and neither of us could run. So we got... As we were waiting for that one to get fixed, we got an LS12, which was a more robust one. And then we broke both of those, and we couldn't get parts for the LS12. Right. Because they were they couldn't get the stuff from China or something like that. And so it's, um, yeah, so we got rid of the LS12, kept your LS10 going, and then we got that other treadmill, and yeah, it all fell apart <laughs> from there. Yeah. So yeah, so this is our fourth one from this particular uh, parent company. And there's... We can see similarities on this between that and what the Livestrongs were, but it, uh, yeah, some changes and it's just, it's what we know, it's what we're comfortable on, but it doesn't hold us back. And that's the trick. Clearly it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yay. Woo it was a good choice. Yes, it was. Yeah. So, yeah, especially if you can get it on a deal. Um, like we're not sponsored in any way, shape or form, unless they want to call us, but the, uh, <laughs> but we got it on a good deal. Um, and we signed up for their, like their email alert things. We got another 5%. So it was on sale and we got a, an extra alert, um, discount or something like that. So it ended up being not bad, probably a bit more than we would have paid for, say, if we went down to a local store for one of the truly disposable treadmills. I think it's going to be worth it because yeah. we do get more of a warranty out of this as well then too. So, Because yeah. for us, I mean, with the number of mills we've gone through, like mm -hmm. you've got some skill for replacing decks and yeah. motors and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. So the longer we have a warranty that will at least replace parts, mm -hmm. we can keep it going. Yeah. So. Yeah. Belt and deck, like when it comes down to it, the belt and deck on these, like uh, I have done it multiple times. The belt and deck on these are, are relatively straightforward. There's just some plastic shrouding to come off and you can just basically pull the deck off from the top. The other treadmill, we had to replace the deck on it and it has to be a full dismantle of the oh, entire treadmill. I forgot treadmill. about that. That was awful. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. You just basically just got to dismantle the whole thing to, to put a new deck on and this you don't. So that's... Uh, to be fair, that might have been because it was like a no lube, whatever, whatever maybe, on that one, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, it didn't have the maintenance. You didn't have to lube it like the silicone of this, but I think that was just part of its robustness mm. and how it was all put together. But this, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have something I can maintain. So anyway, yeah, that's, I think we've got it all pretty much covered. Yeah, if there's any questions, comments, uh, just drop it in the, the comment section below and uh, yeah. Yay, Horizon. We're Ooh. back. Yay. <laughs> all right. See you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.